Hello everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we're going over the markets, uh, looking at the bubbles and looking at a couple of news stories, going over some charts and having a chat with you and having a wee cup of coffee at the same time. So if you're in just now, go down to the like button and hit that like button just now. And crush the likes. And we'll just see if we're live or not. It's very bright in here. What's going on? No, what's going on there? Right, okay, I'll just see if we're live or not and um, see what's happening. Um, we've got a couple of people in, which is good. And the stream is healthy. Cool, cool. Oh, it's saying it's orange. Bugger it, we'll just go for it. Right, we have Richard Cooper, who was first in. Um, welcome to you. We have Mark Scott, Mitch Dieter, Crypto Don Juan. Good to see you. Nick Smith is in. Golden Cross and BTC incoming, just need to hold support. And um, we'll have a look at the charts as well. Honest Crypto Journey is in. Good morning to you. Keg, thank you very much for the $2 donation. Really appreciate it, mate. Good morning to you. Kim O'Brien, one of our brilliant admins, is in the house. Welcome to you, Kim. Nice to see you here. Um, Mervyn Skidmore is in. Max H, Marcus Jafari. Um, Honest Crypto Journey saying likes crushed. Excellent. So if you go down to the like button, hit that like button just now if you're just joining us. And if you're in watching and you've not really kind of commented um, before, just leave a comment just to say hi or good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever. Andreas is in the house as well. So we've got a few people in. So we'll just look at, see what's happening with the bubbles, first of all. I love this. Um, and I kind of use it kind of all the time, well, use it all the time since two days ago. I just love it. Brilliant visual, visual representation of what's happening. We can see straight away, CRO is up. This is on the daily. Um, is up 31%, and I can, can understand why. That's up. LAM, um, Lambda is up 44% on the day, but 427% on the week. We'll look at it weekly as well. WAX is going up 9.31% as well. Digitex still climbing, which is doing brilliant. Digitex, we'll have a look at that. MCO climbing as well. Love that. Only 65 million market cap. That is going to be a 10xer in the future as well. And the news today could confirm this. So we're going to go to... The weekly, look at the weekly on Lambda, 427%, Digitex 22%, ABBC, which is settled, I think, out of court with Alibaba, 35%, CRO up 69%, True Chain up 43%, WIC, Vest Chain, WAX, ETC up 20%, BTG. And so there's a lot of coins up. If you look at the hourly though, because on the daily it just looks like kind of red all over, and it is red all over today. But if we look on the hourly, looks much healthier. So on the hourly, we have True Chain going up again, and um, Populous going up, Wax, MCO, Lambda still going up, Bat going up, OMG, DCR, and a few of the others. Not by much, but this is over the last hour, remember? So it looks much healthier than the daily, which was kind of blood red. And we look at all of that. But it's looking much healthier now. So we'll go to the overall charts, uh, the overall kind of prices, and see why what is happening. So 177.5 billion. So we've gone down about five billion um, dollars, which is no great surprise to be honest, because we have had a brilliant week up uh, with Bitcoin prices going up and all the alts going up as well. There's bound to have been some kind of respite here and this is the respite just now. Hopefully it is just respite and it's not a downturn. I'm thinking it is a respite and that's all it is so I'm not too concerned about it. So who's the winners? We've got Lambda as we said 45%, Crypto.com, CRO, uh, this is a chain up 32%, Wax 9%, Crypto.com, MCO up 4%, Tezos, Digitex Futures, Dai, Vest Chain, Nebulas, Insight Chain, and that's a stable. So it's only about 10% up, 90% down. Who's the biggest loser? We have IOST down 11%, Loopring down 11%, um, Nulls is down 10%, Ogre down 10% as well. They're all in double digit reds. So a lot in the red today. As I said, understandable with the gains we've had. We've got to remember we've gone from 110 billion market cap overall to 185 billion. So it's down slightly. So it's doing really well at the moment. So just as expected just now, just 
bear that in mind. And we'll see overall we have 2,165 cryptocurrencies now. So this is um, cryptocurrencies trading over $10,000 volume in 24 hours. Neuro is up 297% on $37,000 volume. Super Edge up 263%. Shine Chain up 148%. So Super Edge is up 1153% on the week. So don't know about Super Edge, haven't heard of it. So just have a look at Super Edge just now. In fact, we'll go back and do that again. I'll just open up another tab for it so we can go back. Possibly. Um, and this is all. Oh. Come on. We'll go to Super Edge here and we'll just have a look at it while that's charging. Super Edge, ECT. So we don't know too much about this, but it's gone up 1100%. That's, um, you put a dollar in, you get $11 back. So we'll just have to check out this, see what it's all about. Decentralization application, focus on research of Edge Cloud Computing Network. Data scale of large. So is it a data? Something like SC, supercomputing, real time analysis, and batch analysis, data entry notes, not that. Strong DAP, create a DAP platform based on ETH network. It will allow us to um, rent and calculate data for data processing. Hmm. So don't know too much about it. The website's not that great, to be honest. Got the white paper there, it's not got the team. All right, features, application, easy roadmap team. Where's the team? Very young team. Okay, so that was um, kind of super edge. It's all crypto. I'll go back. Is this, yeah, there we go. So Shine Chain Pro Currency is up 102%. Um, what is doing well? Pro currency is on half a million volume. Market cap, euro is twelve thousand. Market cap might be worth having a wee look at that as well. Hemp coin, I think the hemp coins are going to do well. Or the cannabis coins are going to do well. Uh, Uplexa half a million, up sixty one percent as well. What else? Coin to go fifty six thousand <laughs> market capitalization. You just think these, some of these are just going to be easy 10Xers. A 10Xer for 56,000 is only half a million. You could even 10X at 100X it and it's only sitting at 5 million. If it was a good one, obviously you'd have to do your due diligence. But this is kind of what we're looking for as well. We're looking for these kind of black swans. Okay, that's overall. We'll just go back to the chat area. Uh, Mighty Locks is in, Rob Fiddler is in, Mark Scott, oops, got to go, have a great day, you have a great day as well, thanks for joining us Mark, um, I, uh, Umarov, Rob Fiddler is a good time to buy LRC, we'll have a look at the charts as well, Mitch Dieter, Bittrex ordered to cease operation in New York, ah, uh, in New York, right, New York's a kind of funny place for crypto, I'm just going to see, New York orders Bitrex to cease operation but approves Bitstamp. New York State's financial regulator will just have a look at this just now. When was this? Five hours ago. Multiple deficiencies were cited, some of which Bitrex immediately disputed. Uh, meanwhile, Bitstamp has been given the green light to off the trading of five cryptocurrencies in the state. So this is just one state, remember. Um, so it's not everywhere in the world. So is it going to make a big, huge difference? So obviously it's going to dent the market overall, I would imagine. New York State Department of Financial Center approves one crypto exchange for a bit license. It's stifling, really stifling. And America is going to be so low in the crypto sphere. They need to... Claims that in the effort is asked to sign supervisor agreement that if agreed to would result in the issuance of a bit license and a money trans, noting that three key conditions that could not agree. Yeah, the stifling growth. I think this is what's going to happen. 
with America, and uh, they shouldn't be doing that. We don't know what their kind of news story is behind it. We don't know what their the kind of the real news behind it or what is kind of going on. But if they continue like this in the SEC and kind of New York as well, they're just stifling growth and they're just going to get left behind. It's crazy that they're they're trying to bring in so much regulation. Good regulation is good, protects us as well, but not so much that it stifles growth. So they have to be really careful. There's a kind of fine line here. Okay, we'll go to the news just now. Now we'll go to the Bitcoin chart just now. Let's have a Bitcoin chart and um, we'll look at BLX. BLX. <clears throat> so 5,319 for BLX at the moment. So it's going up. It did go up to 5,461. Not there yet. We're going to look at it on the weekly. So we're coming up for on a weekly. We're coming up for a crossover. I'm going to change these actually. We're coming up for a crossover which has not happened since 2015. It's a crossover of the 7 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA and that has not happened um, kind of since 2015 or a crossover. But obviously we've came down we came down at 7,600 and this is on the weekly. So I would imagine the 50 e, uh, the 50 MA and the 200 MA, a lot of people will be watching that. On the monthly, what we're looking at here, we're still above, we're still in a bull market. If you were looking at this chart and you didn't know what it was, you'd say it's a, it's a bull market. And this is what I keep saying, we're not actually in a bear market just now. We're still in a bull market technically. If we look at it from a technical point of view, we're still very much in a bull market. Um, so uh, a lot of people are still saying we're in a bull market, a bear market. I don't think we are. I think overall we're in a kind of bull market just now. Uh, and it's just bouncing off the 50 EMA. That's really what's happening. It's bouncing off the 50 EMA on the monthly. And it's kind of bounced back up. And it just looks a little blip to get to 20,000. Um, just now, but look at that on a monthly. That's three good months in a row we've had for Bitcoin. So um, we're, we're bouncing off that 50 EMA, as we said. Uh, and we're not even using the 7 EMA as resistance. It's going past and through resistance. You can see all the way up here from October 2015, all the way up. It's used the 7 EMA as support all the way up. If you look at that, if you so if you look at this and study it on a monthly, all the way up, it's used it as support. It kind of came down and now bouncing off the 50 EMA and soon it'll be using that 7 EMA as support again as we go up and up and up. So who says we're in a bear market? So many people are saying that, but we're not really. And so it depends on your, I suppose the semantics, depends on your definition of what a bear market is. On the one day, 5,319. So we'll go to BTC USD on Bitstamp. 5,214. Is that correct? So just get rid of that. I said there's a massive cup and handle forming and it's still, it's still forming just now. Five two nine. I wonder why BLX. Must be some kind of anomaly there. I'm just going to go to Coin Market Cap. See where they've got Bitcoin listed at. 5,217. So why is BLX for 5,300? So I'm saying that's not quite correct. Okay, so that's for Bitcoin. Who is kind of up and this is on Binance. Who's up? There's not many up at all. You can see there's only about eight, eight up on Binance just now. And um, we'll go to Binance kind of charts as well. Binance cryptocurrency exchange. Okay, and we'll go to the movers and shakers. Okay, so who's doing well on Binance? As I said, there's not much at all. MCO is up there. I would imagine that's on the back of the news for Coinbase, and we'll share that in a second. Um, because I think the credit card companies or these card companies are going to do brilliant. 
Um, Seller Network is doing excellent as well um, compared to the rest of the market. If we look at this on uh, kind of, we'll go on the four hourly. So Seller Network came down, 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 kind of hit a bottom around about 320. And I thought the bottom was about 360 because it can, kind of was up here around about this level, 360, 365. Uh, but came down again, it's going back up again. So I think, I think um, Seller Network is going to go to at least 500. Said it could double from here and it could easily double, but I think it's going to go to at least 500. Uh, but I'm biased a minute just now. I've got um, a small amount in it just now, but I do think and I'm just keeping in it just now until it goes to 500. Um, Dent has just risen 6%. It's probably gone up a Satoshi. It has. So it's up one Satoshi. I don't know why that came down so much, to be honest. It still baffles me with Dent and Pundi X. It just really baffles me. Um, KNC is starting to move as well. It's just starting to move as we speak. Uh, it's going up and up and up. So that might be making a bigger move just now. We'll see what happens there. Um, Nebulas is up as well. And POA Network is up. So there's not many up at all on Binance. So some good... Good bargains to be had. EST down 17% or 18%. Why? I do not know. So it could be a good buying opportunity on the bounce. It did go down to 772, so that could be a good buying opportunity on the bounce. And this is a good thing to look at as well. The ones that have kind of fallen the, um, the most um, for good buying opportunities on the bounce. OEX, that kind of moved up big time yesterday. Um, so that could be good for buying on a bounce. I still don't know why it's going up that much. Yeah, so look at them as well. So look for kind of contrarian, yeah, AST. I'll keep an eye on that because that is probably going to bounce at some point big time. We've got the daily. I've got support there at 658. It's all time low. Yeah, that is its all-time low. So AST, I would imagine that's going to be a brilliant buying opportunity very, very soon, if not just now. So keep an eye on that as well. Go back to chat, see what's going on. Um, thanks for that news, uh, Mitch, by the way. We haven't skipped more. Steve, do you think BTC will pull back further, or is the support 5,200 strong enough? See people pulling out of alts to BTC if we get another mini pump. Um, yeah, I can see that happening, and this tends to happen. We get cycles, small cycles, and um, with BTC and BT, um, people pulling out of alts and um, going into BTC, that pumps the kind of BTC price up um, as well. But it's precarious just now. I was saying that in the premium group just um, this morning. It's very precarious just now because nobody knows where it's going to go. Obviously, nobody knows, but everybody's kind of a little bit cautious. I have not made any calls for the last couple of days, to be honest, because I'm still. We're not ultra cautious, but cautious about where Bitcoin is going to go and where the alts are going to go as well. It's either or. It could go up. Uh, Bitcoin could pump up to 5,600 and go up to 6,000. Or it could come back down to 4,600 or below 5,000. It's just very precarious just now and nobody can call it. I certainly can't call it. Uh, I certainly can't see where it's going to go. Um, and even that feeling of kind of optimism... There's no feeling of optimism or pessimism. So it's just we're right kind of stuck in no man's land just now. And it's a really strange, it's been a strange week, actually. It's just a really strange kind of feeling just now. It's holding on the 7 EMA on the daily. So that is a good sign. On the four hourly, on the hourly, everything is looking okay. On the hourly, we've kind of crossed down over on the hourly, which is the first time since the 4th of April. So I suppose that's not a good sign. What happens in the micro happens in the macro. Um, so that's not a good sign. So we need that to stay above the kind of 4,200 level or round about these levels. We don't want to go below 5,100 um, because we need that kind of support there, the strong support there. Have a look at there. We've still got strong support um, round about these, this level as well, but just... As I said, it's very precarious just now. We need we need to be supported uh, to get the bounce up. 
So it's just a difficult one to call, very difficult. And obviously you're going to get a case for either either side of it. So yeah, it's a difficult one, Mervyn. Cryptodon 1, Uplexa is 1, I PM'd you. Ah, it's Uplexa. Is that one of the ones that went up 70%? Right. Excellent. So, and DJ can of PM one, uh, right, half a million market cap. Right, so I've forgotten all about it, um, DJ. So I'm just going to check actually, one wee second. I'm going to check something. Ah, right, I see now. And I didn't look into them. This was um, only a couple of days ago for Uplexa. So thanks very much for that, <laughs> DJ, but I didn't get a chance. Just because of everything that's still going on with the house and stuff like that, we're still doing it up big time. Um, I did check it out of the time, but I didn't look deeper into it. So thanks for that. So DJ kind of um, sent me these the other day. And another one as well. So only half a million. Like I said, if that 10x is only goes to kind of 5 million, if 100x is, it's 50 million. And the other ones as well. So yeah, th <laughs> thanks for that, DJ. Should have gone. High Plains Drifter is in the house. Welcome to you, Gary Permenta. Hi, Steve. Have you scrolled down the recent orders for Zillica on KuCoin? An amazing rally took place involved in a series of minute orders. Not sure why. Yeah, I've seen your kind of message in the, the chat group. Now, Gary, it could be somebody's bought but they wanted to buy higher, so they couldn't get in on the kind of orders. They probably couldn't get in on the orders, and it's been a big buy. I would imagine it's been a big buy, and but they've had to go to a much higher price, and it's kind of killed all the other prices before it. So it pumps up and then comes right back down again. Um, so I'm going to show you um, this as well. So a lot of people don't realise this. So if I, want to, if I want to buy POA Network, and say I wanted to buy 1 million of them, at exchange, you can see there 23,000, 13,000. I wouldn't be able to buy 1 million of POA network because there's not that many orders here at all to sell at 1 million. So it's at 830 just now. I'd have to go all the way up and keep looking. So I wouldn't be able to buy 1 million without going all the way up to about 900. Yeah, there we go 237,220. So about 900. If I put an order there, to buy one million, that's I have to have to go that high price. But what a lot of people don't realise is if we go to seven decimal places, we could go up to eight seven. So this tells you kind of where where everything is lying just now. So I, if I want to buy one million, yeah, I'd still have to go up to nine hundred. So I could go up to eight ninety. That'd be half a million, about seven hundred thousand. So I'd still have to go up to the 900. But a lot of the time, there's kind of hidden orders there or hidden sale orders or whatever as well um, in these. And so we, the price shoots way up. If I was to buy at 900, it would shoot way up and then it would come all the way back down again um, because the, the orders would kick in. And there's hidden orders in here as well that a lot of people don't realise. You can hide your orders as well. You don't need to kind of show it on the order book. So these orders could be hidden and then they kick in as soon as a, an event happens. Um, so you might have a, a hidden order saying, okay, if it hits 900, I want you to kind of put an order in to sell at 910 or something like that. Or if it hits 850, um, so that's kind of what happens. That's why it goes up quickly and comes back down quickly. If that makes sense. Hope that does make sense. Uh, Mark Pollan is in the house. Dirty Fergie is in. Goddy Boy Scotland, Nick Smith. Bull run maybe, but bull market? Nah, not yet in my opinion. Um, Axel is in the house. Welcome to you. Still two or three things required to officially call a bull market in my opinion. So what will be required, do you think, Nick, for it to be called a bull market? Because as I said, I think if we look at the monthly, we're in a bull market already. Uh, we've never really hit a bear market yet. But that's a contrarian view, obviously. You look at it from different points of view. Bernard Donald is in the house. Gary Pimenta. TKY got smashed with the China FUD, but still may represent a great buy. TKY, I've never looked at that in a while. 
But what did it go down? Market cap 30 million, 51. All the way down, yeah. So it's not been doing well all the time. Yeah, so it could be a good buying opportunity. Max H, hi Steve, is Zenfin one of the most, uh, those quiet coins that could come back, still holding from last year? Zenfin, never heard that for a while. To be honest, these are the ones we were trading on um, Banco. Or one of the ones we were trading on Banco. And I actually was seeing this a couple of months ago and thought, hmm, this could be quite good. Um, Zenfin again. And it's 18 Satoshi then. So it's come down since. It could well be. It could well be that. I mean, the volume, I would imagine, is still doing most of the volume on Bancor Network. Oh, no, it's not. Mercatalk's top BTC. Bancor is only $3,000. So it's obviously been listed in other places soon. Um, and since then, top BC, BTC, that was like, well, Mercatalk's, is that worth trading as well? Kind of looks like was trading that much volume. But yeah, in answer to your question, it could be a really good opportunity for Zinfin. And go to boy Scotland, saying good morning to you as well. Melbourne's good morning, saying cheers, Steve. Okay, we'll look at the news. Um, Coinbase and Visa are making Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripples, XRP and Litecoin payments a reality. This is huge news. This is absolutely huge. Um, and I think this is where a lot of the mass adoption is going to occur um, when cards like these become mainstream because essentially they're just Visa um, kind of MasterCards, but you can spend Ripple, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum with these cards as well. Now, I don't know quite how they're doing it, um, but I would imagine what will happen is it will get converted automatically from the payments you've got in or the cryptos that you've got in for the likes of Litecoin or XRP or Ripple, or you just go into an app and just swap over um, from from Ethereum and swap over to cash, and then you kind of cash out that way. Um, one step that you shouldn't have to make, I suppose, one more step that you shouldn't really have to make, but is making this a reality. But this is good for mass adoption. It's brilliant for Coinbase, excellent for Coinbase. A lot of people were saying, and um, this was in the kind of Reddit, oh no, it looks like we've got real competition. Um, this is in the MCO, Crypto.com um, chat, but I see this as good for MCO, kind of raises the kind of profile. Now, um, there's other cards out there as well. Obviously, 10X is another one as well. MCO, I really like. Um, I really like what they're doing. I really like kind of the, the noise they're making in this space as well compared with the others. Um, and I was looking at um, Wirex as well. Wirex is a brilliant card. I don't know if you've used Wirex yet, but Wirex is brilliant to use. I've used it myself. All you have to do is just swap from XRP to kind of pounds, and then you can um, kind of spend your money as well. But you get crypto back as well on that, which is good. Same with MCO. You can stake MCO as well for a period of months. Um, but I really do like MCO, and the CRO um, has really gone up big time as well. But... For Coinbase, this could help to bring kind of mass adoption um, as well, depending on what the rates are going to be. And this is a Coinbase kind of website. So Coinbase cards, spend crypto anywhere. You get the app as well, obviously, with it. So it just says, introducing Coinbase cards, spend your crypto instantly, a Visa debit card that makes crypto as spendable as the money in your bank, powered by your Coinbase account balance. Uh, use your card worldwide, just like kind of Revolut or kind of Wirex or any of the others. Um, keep your crypto on the safe side, select your crypto wallet, track your Bitcoin, um, whatever. So I would imagine you just have to swap over just like you have to do with Wirex as well. So I really like this. MCO, just now, you can't get MCO in the UK or the MCO card, or I don't believe unless they've changed that recently. Um, somebody's saying, will they ship the cards in the next 10 years? If so, I might have to get one because it'll end up being faster than crypto.com. So this could help MCO, but they're going to have to get their arse in gear and start um, kind of shipping the cards out, uh, especially in the UK. Not especially in the UK, but I can't get one in the UK just now, but you can still buy MCO and store it. So I see this as good for mass adoption, and this is what we need for mass adoption. I think it's going to be the likes of Revolut, Wirex, kind of MCO, 10X, um, Coinbase cards as well. 
that's going to bring about mass adoption, that's going to help mass adoption. But for me, I don't understand why Wirex don't do a reverse ICO. Wirex would do brilliant on a reverse ICO because they've got things in place, they're, they're up and running, uh, they're actually getting people on board, they've onboarded users as well, a lot of users. Uh, and Wirex card is really good, actually the app is really good um, as well. So I don't understand why Wirex don't do a reverse ICO. They may, might not have to do one, they might have enough money. And the pro they've got backing as well. But it'd be brilliant if they had a reverse ICO and did kind of what MCO are doing. I think they would do brilliant in the crypto space if they did a reverse ICO and brought this out. Especially now with the Ethereum price being so low. If they use Ethereum or Binance, they could use the Binance token. I wouldn't do that. But definitely if they did a reverse ICO using Ethereum, that would be amazing for them because they would get all this Ethereum in and the price of Ethereum is extremely low just now. And I don't understand why more companies are not doing ICOs just now, especially with the Ethereum price being so low if they're going to be using Ethereum. So I see ICOs as coming back. I know we're getting a lot of IEOs, which is good. It's good for the market. It brings excitement back to the market. But ICOs should be coming back using Ethereum as well. Now push the Ethereum price up um, as well. But with it being so low, I think it could be really good um, for Ethereum and kind of companies just now as well. So a lot of companies have lost out because um, Ethereum was priced at $1,000. Now it's 90%, it's lost 90% of its value, which means a lot of the companies, a lot of the projects who didn't do good money management have lost 90% of their valuation, I suppose, as well. So it'd be good if the ICO started coming back out. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think that might drive the market back again. So I think that can only be a good thing. But the Coinbase news is a good thing for MCO, the likes of 10X. I would imagine 10X has that gone up as well. Or PY. Just have a look. No, it's not. It's gone down 5%. Uh, still market cap of 38 million. Thought that might have went up on the news. But it hasn't. So, yeah, I think that's uh, the main kind of competitors to Coinbase would be MCO and 10X couple of others as well but yeah Wirex if you're listening get a reverse ICO in there you'd be tops in this market I think and um, this is other news the Philippines and thank you very much to Deb, James and Rob who provided the news and um, some of the news stories we've got here as well and um, so really appreciate you kind of posting those stories in the admin group and um, the Philippine Central Bank has already legalized 10 Bitcoin exchanges so according to local reports the Banco Central um, NG Filipinas BSP has approved three crypto exchanges, bringing the total number of approved crypto exchanges to 10. So this is good, obviously, for the Philippines. Is they're going to start adopting, well, they have started to adopt, and they see the potential of um, cryptocurrencies as well. So Melchor um, Plabasan, officer in charge of Technology, Risk and Innovation Supervision Department of the Central Bank, said newly approved were Bex Express, Coinville Fills, Inc. and ABA Global Fills Inc. So one out of 10 adults in the Philippines use crypto. One out of 10 adults. This just shows you, and I think in the Western world, it's not really used um, just now because we don't see a need to use it. We've got bank, everybody's got a bank account. Everybody's doing relatively well compared to before. Um, and the economy is doing relatively well as well. So they don't see a need for crypto. But in the Philippines, where it's a relatively poor country, um, obviously, they see a need for crypto. They see the potential of crypto. And this is where we have to look to the people that are kind of improvising, if you will, with this. Philippines, 10% of the adults are using crypto. That's amazing. Imagine if you got that in the UK, the US, and um, kind of Europe as well. Uh, and that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to come um, for the rest. So you look at the micro to look at the, the macro picture. And this is what's happening just now. So one out of 10 adults in the Philippines, that's amazing. Over 5 million customers can now receive Western Union money transfers directly into the coins.ph wallets in Philippines. Learn more about the service. So this is for Western Union. They're kind of obviously seeing the potential of that as well. So this is good. This is really good news for the cryptosphere as a whole. As I said, what happens in the micro tends to kind of filter up to the macro. Um, so we have to look at these same in Japan as well what Japan are doing I'm not saying that's a poor country because far from it's one of the richest countries but we'll have to look at what they're doing and how they're adopting um, crypto as well 
And the crypto rich list, the world's richest billionaires list will look a lot different if Bitcoin has $1 million. Um, Satoshi will be worth $1 trillion. We'll just have a look at this just now. So this is the Bitcoin holdings. Um, Satoshi Nakamoto, um, $1.1 million. We don't know, obviously, that's just held in a wallet. Net worth of Bitcoin has 250k. If it has a million and ranked on the number one world list, um, if it hit um, that, these kind of prices. Bulgarian government, I didn't actually know this um, about the Bitcoin holdings with 213,000 Bitcoin. Net worth with Bitcoin at 250k, 53 billion. Net worth with Bitcoin at a million, 213 billion. Um, the Winkle, Winklevoss twins as well, they hold 176,000 Bitcoin. Unbelievable. So they'd be number two on the world's rich list if it hit a million dollars. And this is um, just kind of nice to look at. Roger Ver, Barry Silbert, Anthony Gallippi, Gallippi Tim Draper, uh, Charlie Shrem, US government hold 10,000 Bitcoin holdings. Where they got that information from, I don't know. Um, Mike Novogratz was 10,000 as well. He'd be number 180 on the rich list at $10 billion. So just a fun thing to kind of look at. This is news from Coinbase as well, from Brian Armstrong. Coinbase Commerce is growing nicely. You can see here the charts. Um, this is Commerce Weekly confirmed transactions. Coinbase earning is growing nicely. This is the total earners from Coinbase um, the Commerce side. And the assets, assets under custody. And this is the wallet use as well. Coinbase wallet is growing nicely big time as well. So I've been saying for months that Coinbase is actually doing really well. I didn't rate them at the beginning at the, the beginning of last year um, because I thought they were kind of stifling it a little bit, the growth of crypto because it was so kind of hard to use. But they're doing brilliant things now and they've really come into the space in a big way. And I think they're doing amazing things just now. Again, that's probably a contrarian view. A lot of people don't like them, but I do like what they're doing. I like their kind of business as well. Um, Poloniex expands margin trading offering for non-US customers. So Ethereum Classic is now available for margin trading on crypto-to-crypto -crypto exchange platform Poloniex for non-US customers. ETC joins other cryptocurrencies already available for margin trading on the platform, including Ether, Dash, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Monero, and Stellar, all with them um, Bitcoin as a base pair. So these margins, um, these margin kind of listings for a lot of the companies, and you heard the news um, kind of yesterday as well, um, that one of the other exchanges was opening up to the public as well. Um, so the exchanges just now, there's a lot of competition for the exchanges, but what I think is going to happen with the exchanges, there's going to be about 10 or 20 exchanges and all the rest are going to disappear. The fuddy ones, the shitty ones, crappy ones are just going to disappear. Um, so I think that's what's going to happen. And the likes of Poloniex, Hasser and Bitfinex that we talked about yesterday, they're going to have to up their game a little um, little bit as well because there's so much competition with the likes of Binance, KuCoin coming up, uh, up and coming as well. So I think the exchanges are going to do really well. So we have to look at the exchanges as well to help us to make money but and see what ones are going to kind of outlast the other ones. Um, definitely Binance, it looks just now, that's kind of tops just now. But this is why these kind of exchanges are looking to change um, the kind of models and see what's happening. But margin calling on ETC could be a good thing as well. Things it represents. ETC looks like a, a great buying opportunity just now. Um, XRP community wants Skype implement XRP micropayments. So the Ripple community has approached Skype, a telecommunications app that focuses on providing voice and video calls between devices on integrating XRP onto the platform. So this is another, this is where the XRP army really come into their own because they drive forward. They don't just wait on the CEO. They don't just wait on um, the kind of company advisors or whatever to drive things forward. They drive things forward on their own as well. Uh, this is what I like about XRP community as well. So they're going to, they've approached Skype to say, listen, bring in micropayments so you can do it over Skype, which I think would be a good thing as well. Bitcoin passes a milestone, 400 million transactions. This news is going to have been passed over. So 400 million quietly takes over. Um, so they talked about the Bitcoin price being 5,200, but um, this 
Data from monitoring resource blockchain.com confirmed that Bitcoin handles its 400 millionth transaction on April the 8th, which is amazing for something that's just going to die. That people are saying is just going to die. 400 million transactions, which is pretty incredible. And it's not just 400 um, million. Other numbers also make for impressive reading, including transferring of over $3.2 trillion in value last year alone. So this is a transfer back and forth between all the transactions. $3.2 trillion. This market is not going to die. So what you're going to do with this kind of information, with this information stored that you know all this, and other people looking at it from the outside in are looking at it, is Bitcoin going to survive? I don't think so. They're going to die. Cryptocurrency is going to die, blah, blah, blah. But you know all of this. And this is where you say to yourself, okay, it's time to start buying just Bitcoin itself, even just Bitcoin or your other favourite ones. This is a brilliant time. Even if it does go down, it's still a brilliant time just to accumulate. Um, Chinese Bitcoin miners' sufferings in Iran, where electricity is touted cheap at 0.006 cents, so six tenths of a cent. So many Chinese crypto miners have migrated to places with cheap electricity and favourable policy on offer as a result of the escalated government crackdown on cryptocurrency and its production process. So that's what's happening in China just now. Obviously, we've heard the news. Could be FUD, we don't know, um, about China um, supposedly going to be closing down um, the kind of mining mining farms as well. So they're looking elsewhere. So since late 2018, the oil-rich Middle Eastern country, Iran, has been a hotspot to Chinese miners. The country is attracting a growing number of Bitcoin miners due to its cheap electricity, which is touted as cheap as six-tenths of a cent per kilowatt hour. So I don't know what the Chinese is um, just now. I know there was free electricity as well. That's been kind of going to be scrapped as well. Um, so, yeah, so there's going to be... Uh, Iran could take over for mining as well. Uh, just the speed. <laughs> checking on my computer. It's pretty crap just now. There's the speed. Oh, they download 22 megabits download. Upload 47. That's kind of crap but I'm on a wire I need to get it kind of directly plugged in uh, I think that's it for the news we'll look at some of the other um, charts as well for the smaller caps that we're looking at Digitex futures doing freaking amazing 2605 kind of surpassed its all time high so it's doing absolutely brilliant at the moment so well done to Digitex holders Metamorph is doing, or was doing brilliant, I don't know if it is now, is, oh, 171. It's just going up and up and up. Metamorph, where is Metamorph? Just now, we say ridiculously low market capitalization, still ridiculously low, um, at under 1 million. So Metamorph is doing brilliant things. Version 2 is coming out for Metamorph soon, and it's up to 171 Satoshi, which is fantastic. You could have got in down here only a couple of weeks ago, well, probably a couple of weeks ago, here at 80. So you could have went up 100% um, there. But I've held Metamorph since the uh, kind of beginning, and it's doing brilliant just now. Keep on saying I need to do another video. I do, it's just getting time to do it. But still loving kind of Metamorph, what they're doing. Version 2, can't wait to come out um, as well and see what kind of happens with version 2. Of it, but under a million market capitalization, amazing. And um, what else we're we looking at? Um, BP. Oh, Bab. Bab has moved up as well. I know that kind of moved up slightly, very slightly, from about 113 gui to 120 gui or gui. I keep saying that. I need to just choose one gui. I'll go for gui. So 120 gui. BPT, Blockport, what are they doing? Still round about that 2,500 level, 2,400. That's going to do okay. That's another exchange, obviously, as well. I like the exchanges. Just going to look at BGG, see what they're doing. Yeah, it's come down big time. Not big time, but about 40% down. So Rob, I need to look at that story as well. You kind of sent yesterday for BGG. 
because I was going to invest in BigoGo. And it's a new story the the new kind of listing of the IEO they had. It wasn't authorized. So if they're doing that just now at the early stages, um, not a good sign. Not a good sign. Who else? IPL. And they're not doing well at all just now. Probably near their all time low. XTRD, I'm not saying we're kind of moving up as well. I don't know if anybody's still on XTRD. No, 10 Satoshi. I thought they'd, they did go up, but they kind of came back down again. Obviously. One hour. Yeah, it did go up to about 20, it came back down. Obviously, it came back down. So you can see that's very bitty. Um, for XTRD, I still think they work in the background, but I've never really, um, looked at them for a while to see what they're up to. But they did shoot up, but obviously it's came back down again. Okay, we're back to chat. Um, Max is in, cheers Steve. Go about Scott. KNC about to bounce again, five minute chart. And um, big LTC drop just stopped me out. Oh, nightmare. So LTC, we'll look at LTC, BTC. All right, just making sure we are still live. Everything's looking okay there. The stream health is not looking brilliant, but we'll continue. That's fine. We'll just continue. Oof! What happened there? That's just in the last. 15 minutes, what the hell happened with LTC? It dropped down to $79, dropped down $5. Which represents about 7% drop. We're like, okay, what's happened? BTC USD is BTC come down. It did. So it dropped 5,200 to 5,162. Coming back up again. Hmm. There's something going on for sure. BLX still has it. That's, that's obviously wrong. 5,319. So it's dropped to 5,172. Okay, what's happening? Um, here, sell are still up. That's still going up as well. KNC. It did 5706, it's now 5428. So it was moving up, obviously, with that wee kind of blip there. And it came, came down to 5343 and bounced back up again. So it's just a little warning sign, a little kind of firing across the bow. Mm. Aloysius is in. Hi, Stephen, everyone. What's your thoughts on Siren Labs token Ambrosis? We'll take a look at the charts. Kova is a hidden gem worth a look and is getting a lot of attention. Kova, I've heard about that before. Four million market cap. Ah, uh, it's moved up. Big time. Not to say it's not going to move up again, but it was at 26 Satoshi. Uh, it's moved up to 48, so nearly doubled um, over the last month. Hyobi, it's on. Hyobi is a good good one with a social. Wolf of Binance, March the 14th. Koba, April the 2nd, so nine days ago, March the 21st. I don't have a lot of updates. That always kind of concerns me. I know a lot of people don't understand why, but it does concern me if they don't have updates. 
um, on Twitter or Reddit or Facebook. I would imagine it's Twitter. A lot of people, crypto space uses Twitter. So that would kind of concern me, or slightly would concern me. Um, so we'll look at Siren Labs. We looked at them before, I believe. SRN, 16 million, down 12% just now. SRN, I'll just see if they're on. I don't think they are, are they? SRN, yeah, they are. Not looking good on the hourly, and um, just following just now. Look on the four hourly, obviously not looking good there as well. And um, we'll look on the daily, we'll look at the bigger picture. It says it's all time low at the moment. And doesn't look as if it's going to stop there for Siren Labs. One weekly. Yep. Could be a good buying opportunity from the point of view if everything's okay and you look at the team, do your due diligence, and there's no bad news out. It could be a good, could represent a good buying opportunity from that point of view. Not at the moment though. You'd be certainly looking on the hourly just to see if the hourly is going to cross back over the 50 EMA or the 70 EMA is going to cross over the 50 EMA. Hasn't really done that uh, since the 6th of April. Crossed down at 813. It's lost about 25% since then. So you'd certainly be looking at it to cross back over before getting into it. Um, so it could be a buying opportunity, but you'd, you'd, it could uh, be like catching a fallen knife just now because it's gone down quite a lot. So Sign Labs and the other one you mentioned was Ambrosis, like Ambrosis as well. Um, just have a look at Ambrosis. The same again with Ambrosis. So it's just in line with the market just now. So again, represents a good buying opportunity. We'll look at the macro picture. Um, close to its all-time low. It has, yeah. Finished its all-time low closing. So it could be a double bounce from here. This is from December 2017. Was well, the previous all-time low at closing price, and now it's hit that exact kind of price, 1100. So it could be a brilliant buying opportunity for Ambrosis here. But again, you might want to wait just to see maybe on the hourly. It was like in a 15 minutes um, down. I wouldn't look in the five minutes because you're not going to be day trading it. But yeah, you might go down to even the 15 minutes, waiting that turning back up, the 70 MA crossing over the 50 MA and just going in, because it, it might bounce big time for Ambrosis. So all of the market is down just now. The market is just steadily going down. You can see there's only three, four, five, nine. Nine that are in the green at the moment. Go back to BTC USD. It's coming back up. Yeah, a bit of a Bart Simpson there. Could have been a bear trap there. Okay, we'll just um, we'll finish up. We're nearly finished. Um, Gene just checked in folks what's happened red day yeah it is a red day like button crush thank you very much Gene um, look at the bubbles just now this is over the last hour what's happened over the last hour yeah it's turning red it was green you've seen that at the start of the stream that it was green now we're turning red this is why I like the bubbles as well it tells you at a visual glance and um, kind of what's happening overall and um, so it was green overall about an hour ago but now it's starting to kind of turn red just like the kind of daily Look at the daily, that's kind of blood red there, apart from a few that stand out. CRO, Lamb and Wax, they really stand out. Digitex, Dai as well. Weekly, it looks much different, obviously. Um, but we're concerned about the hourly. PPT, Maximine, Qubit, Lamb, CRO. So there's not many in the green at all. That's Paxos. Pay attention to that. So something underlying is happening. We can see here, this is kind of, if we take this as a representation of the market as a whole. 
Looking forward to replay. Thank you very much, Gene. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just now. Not because you were just joining us, Gene, but <laughs> it's just because we're finishing up just now. So I'll leave it there just now. I'm probably not going to make any calls unless I see the market turning. It looks as if the market is turning downwards at the moment. Um, but we need to wait and see what happens with kind of Bitcoin. It's trying to push back up again. Uh, it's pushed up $30 in the last couple of minutes. So we'll see kind of what happens with Bitcoin. And then I would imagine they also start to follow that as well. If not, we'll see more alts falling, I would imagine. Uh, so we'll, we'll take it from there and just um, take a cue from what happens from there. But at the moment, it's looking like a, a little bit of a downturn just now. I need to wait and see what happens. Okay, until next time, namaste. Take care. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.